And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Are you ready? Yeah, it's time for the Weighing In Podcast. I'm ready. Look at Big George. He's ready. He's moving his head around. He's all going, go, go. George. Look at that, baby. Get them shoulders moving. Damn, you could have been in the break dancing in the Olympics in Paris. You could have been right next to that girl that was from Australia. She has made the news, baby. <laughs> she killed an entire fucking sport <laughs> with one performance. I love that. Josh, I know you don't know what I'm talking about because you're not educated on the things that are happening in this world, but that's okay because that's why I'm here. I'm here to educate you and make sure you know what's going on. What's happening? Did you watch the Olympics? No, I didn't. Neither did I. <laughs> yeah. I Too much crap going trash. on for me. No. Yes. I wasn't watching that trash. I used to Especially love Especially the, the break dancing. I did too. They've lost their luster, it. man. They're not the same. No. They're not the same. No, um, not. Unfortunate. So unfortunate. It is. I mean, there's certain um, sports. Like I feel, I always feel like, you know, the 100 meter, the 200 meter. Like all the, the 400. Most of the track and field most stuff. Most of the track the stuff same. is is pretty good you know yeah. the gymnastics then, is kind of gone up and down depending on gymnastics you know. is great all like all the mainstay things it's they've tried to incorporate things that you look and you go please that's that's not what the well, olympics is about you know what they lost well, you know what it was is that they were losing money and they were losing not losing money but they were losing the attention to extreme sports skateboarding snowboarding so they thought they would try to enter them in i'm okay with skateboarding and snowboarding i am too but i'm saying they, they just decided now trying to enter those into the olympics and they're having a they're having a rough go i think people just don't they don't care as much about those type of things um but regardless i think obviously they lost a lot with their opening ceremonies which is a total fucking shit show oh, yeah Yep. And so when that happened, it was like, I think people just like tuned it out. I mean, what? I was over at several people's houses doing like, you know, pool parties and barbecues. When, when is it that, oh, we, I want to have someone trying to message me. Yeah. Yeah. Take your message and stuff it up your ass. <laughs> okay. I'm just fucking, okay. I'm, I'm serious. Uh, Done. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. See? That's, okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs> uh, all right. Hey, guys. We got, we, got a, we got a pretty good show for you guys, man. We got the PFL coming up on Friday. We've got uh, the UFC on Saturday. So as we normally do, we're going to go in order. We're going to go PFL first. We'll talk the main card for the PFL, and then we'll jump right into the UFC, talk the main card for the UFC, and we'll probably wrap this show, and then we'll throw some news articles probably together by the end of the week so you guys have shows to, to pay attention to. The whole week so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button hit the thumbs up and hit the little bell and notifications for when we drop george will be dropping shows on wednesday thursday possibly friday but there'll be some uh some fun stuff to talk about but um but let's go ahead and jump right into the ufc oh no sorry no no UFC, no, no, the no pfl <laughs> let's jump right into the he's PFL. already going man he's already i uh, know i'm already but uh we john we have a rematch man this is more your world go right ahead no we do have a rematch we've got impa uh Kinsang and i Going up against Josh Silveira again. They were the finals for the uh, PFL last year for the light heavyweights. Josh Silveira being a uh, guy grew up in the sport, grew up with his dad being a fighter, became a wrestler, wrestled at ASU. And Impa is a guy, you know, was fighting at 185, went up to 205, has fought way better at 205 than he ever fought. Not that he wasn't a good fighter at 185, but he's got gas for days at 205 we're at 185 he's losing too much in the weigh-ins he's dropping too much weight he can't get that same energy back he can't have that same gas tank so i think you know although slightly undersized as far as frame he's got all the strength all the speed needed the speed helps him and so he's been a problem child for everybody in the light heavyweight division dufort was the not dufort uh nick netoff was the guy that really kind of showed what the size could do against Impa for a while in their earlier match that put him into the playoffs, but then Impa took over and knocked him out, beat the hell out of him. So, you know, he's he's proving that, man, he's, he's there, he's real, and Josh Silvera is in a position where this is a three-round fight. His last one was a five-round fight. He wasn't able to get it done in the five rounds. Maybe with a higher output, you know, he's going to have to make some changes in what happened in that fight. But 
Silvera's got all the tools needed to to do well in this fight. I look at Impa and I think to myself, you know, he's one of those guys where people look and go, well, he lost to Johnny Eblen at 185. This is when the weight cut situations Man, affect you. It does. You can see and, it. And I had the conversation with uh, Sean O'Connell and some of the guys of the PFL because I worked the Riyadh show and then when Johnny Eblen and Impa fought, they were like, oh, Impa's got great cardio. He's going to push the pace. He's going to do this. I'm like, Johnny Evelyn's got great cardio. Like, that's what's like, Johnny Evelyn's got that. And then you You're saw nothing. they fought at 185 and you saw his conditioning just faded after around one and a half. Now, they fought at a pretty, pretty fast pace. It was. And, it was a super fast pace. But I think he thought that because he's been having success at 205, that it was going to be able to translate at 185. But because he cut so much weight, it was a, he had a hard time. Yep. keeping that pace that Johnny Eblen keeps, you know, in a, in a, in the, in the fight, <clears throat> Johnny is a good wrestler. Johnny puts together great combinations, but you can see the size that Impa was able to put back on was giving Johnny some problems in the first round, round and a half. Then Johnny started taking over the fight, you know, and just pushing the pace and had success. But in this fight with Impa and uh, Silviera, I just look at it and I go, you're going to get a repeat of what happened last night. Yeah, last time. Last time. Impa's going to be able to stuff takedowns. Impa's going to be able to keep it on the feet. And I think he's just going to be able to touch him in positions that uh, Joshua is not going to be able to deal with. He, he's going to be in put be he's going to be put in uncomfortable positions that are going to burn up his energy, and he's going to start to slow down by round one, one and a half. One at the end of one, one and a half, depending on how how much he wrestles early, and if he can't get takedowns early, that's the question. He, he's going to struggle. That's it. So, he's got I mean, to get. He's got to finish those takedowns. He 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 works on single legs a lot. He's good with them, uh, but he can't seem to get Impa down. Or if he got him down, he can't keep him down, and that's burning a ton of energy. So he's going to have to figure out what do I need to do differently to you know get him down and then keep him down. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Should this have been the main event? Should this have been the main event? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm, I'm looking at the card. I'm sorry. Well, Clay Collard and Brent Primus is a better fight than that fight. Uh, and I'm going to say Rob Wilkinson and Yog Shmurdoff is definitely a better fight. Than I that like fight. the, I loved, I loved the, especially the fact that Rob Wilkinson and Yog Shmurdoff have never fought. Yeah. So, but you got to look and you got, and, and this is the problem. Rob Wilkinson was a champion from two years ago. Mm -hmm. Impa was the champion last season. And Josh being the guy that was in the finals with him. I understand why it's that way. Well, Clay Clara was in the in the finals last year as didn't well. Didn't win though. Brent, no, he didn't win. But Brent Primus, whole point. Is coming over though, he's the former champion. But he didn't I win. Can say, but no, but, but he I didn't can win. Say that, who didn't win? None of them won the PFL championship like Impa did. Oh, jeez. I'm I'm just being honest. All right. They don't have but, anybody in that main card other than Impa that won the championship last year. Yeah, I guess, but we can sit here and say the same thing that they've been telling us for a long time. When you fight in the next year, don't the title's go there. not there anymore. Don't go there. I know, heaven forbid, we, <laughs> we talk about the facts. You know, um, heaven forbid. Like, <laughs> there's, they're no longer the champion. You walk in there, and the tournament starts, you're no longer the champion from the year before, and we that's don't right. see that anymore. Well, that's obviously not true if he's now at the main event. Got uh, but look, I, I'm a big fan of Impa. I think he's a great yeah. fighter. He really impressed me with the Johnny Evelyn performance. He's a great um, guy. He's a great guy, super nice guy too. Great yeah. to be around. Uh, but this, this I look at it as being like if Josh can't get the takedowns early and try to control the top position. The other thing too is even getting the takedowns, can he hold him down? That's the whole point. That's yeah. That's it. Uh, but to me, the next fight on the card is probably the most exciting and fan favorite. It should this be a fan is, favorite fight. This is gonna be a I, great fight. I agree with you. I think this is and this is a fight that's gonna have a lot going with it. Like Rob Wilkinson won the PFL title two years ago, and then he had. Uh, a suspension based upon he had beat uh, Thiago Santos uh, in his first fight for that year and I think tested positive for something, so I don't know what it was, but he got a suspension from uh, the Athletic Commission for it. So then was out for the entire season, came back in this one. He's looked really good, and he's going against a guy in Dovlachan Yekshimurdov who is fast. He's got a lot of spinning attacks. He's got very good defensive wrestling. He is undersized, kind of like Impa, as far as frame-wise, for the weight class, especially against someone like Rob Wilkinson. Rob Wilkinson's big. Hmm. He's a big dude. And Rob's going to have to put that 
weight on him and that pressure on him because that's what you need to do to slow Yank Shamert off down. But the one thing that Rob's going to have a problem with is the speed of Yank Shamert off. Yank Shamert off is fast. He's got fast hands and he's got a big overhand right. And he's got to be careful of those two things as far as his movement. He's in and out. He's very elusive. He's a good fighter. You know, I've been mm-hmm. watching him since I repped him back in, you know, ACB long ago. And uh, I was super impressed with him when I saw him then. And then just watched him as he came over to Bellator. He was in the, the Grand Prix there. He's done well, especially in the PFL. He's just been uh, getting racking up nothing but wins. But Rob Wilkinson is a grinding monster. He's a guy that he, when he gets his weight on you and he's able to put shots on you, he breaks people down. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at very similar situation that you're talking about. Yogs is explosive, big overhand right. Got he's got a very fast head kick. He puts yeah. the two things together. If you overcommit on a takedown, he'll hip toss you and put you on your back, and then he'll just make his way back up to his feet. Um, he's a very well rounded fighter. I think he's a lot more threatening than Rob Wilkinson. I think that Rob has a chance and opportunity to win this fight. Oh, yeah. he's got to get this fight to the ground. I don't think on the feet that he has a chance. I think on the feet, Yogg's going to leg kick him, head kick him. He's going to look to land big shots. He's he's going to be a lot faster than, than Rob. I, I think that that's the whole key is Rob's going to have to figure out, oh, okay, I see how fast he is and I see how he moves. I've got to figure out a way to close the distance without him being able to do damage to me. And I, I'm going to give, give uh, American Top Team a lot of credit. They've done little tiny things with Yag Shemirdov since he's come over there mm-hmm. and started training at uh, American Top Team that have made him an even better fighter. And, you know, when you're talking, it's little tiny percentages that make differences in fights and guys that are winning fights and guys that are losing fights. And right now, as you say, confidence is key. Yag Shemirdov's got a ton of confidence coming into this. He's one fight away from a million dollar fight and he's been fighting well. I mean, you got to think when you go back to like the the two hundred five pound title uh, tournament, the Grand Prix from Bellator. I mean, he lost to Corey Anderson. Yeah, you know, in that, and the reason why he lost to Corey Anderson, he just got basically controlled. The size of Corey was too much for for Yogs. He's not a big two hundred five pounder. He doesn't cut no. a lot of weight. No, but no. man, he's fast. He's elusive. He's quick with his leg kicks. He's quick with setting things up. He kind of gives a lot of feints. He, like you said, bounces in and out. He's he's a real fun fighter to watch. Rob's more of a traditional, just like kind of stand in front of you and try to trade a little bit, but then also get in on the on the clinch and the takedowns. Well, he, he'll break you down. Be a problem for him. I, I, it really depends on who's able to you know, implement their their game plan. I think Yogg's is going to try to stay pretty much to the outside and then have his rushes inside where he does well and he throws a lot of shots. He throws mm-hmm. not ones. He throws one, two, threes, fours, and he gets himself out and. uh if he's able to do that and get himself out without being damaged by Rob, he's going to do well in the fight. But if Rob's able to put, say, look at Rob's whole game plan should be take a look at the blueprint that Corey Anderson made. Because Corey Anderson in the beginning of that was in the stand-up with him and was having some problems with the extra murder off as far as he was getting hit, hit with some shots and said, screw this, I'm closing the distance, I'm using my wrestling, took him to the ground, and from that point just took over in the fight. That's yeah. the way Rob Wilkinson wins the fight. Next fight. Gadzi Rabadanov going up against Michael Dufort. This is actually a really good fight. I think Gadzi doesn't get enough credit for how good he really is. He is a solid, solid fighter everywhere. His stand-up is good. He's got good power in his hands. He's got fantastic wrestling. He's very different. You, you just don't see him being underneath people. He's always in the top position when he's on the ground. You know, this is coming back, and here's this is Dagestani style of, you know, uh, MMA where he's very good with what he does, and he decides where the fight's going to be. And uh, stand-up, like I said, he's comfortable in the stand-up. He's not a guy that's shooting for a lot of takedowns all the time, but when the opportunity is there and he can utilize that to change the course of the fight, he does it all the time. Duford is a guy that you, you take a look at. Very strong, very physical. He's got speed. He goes to the body well. He's he's definitely going to be uh, on the underside of the wrestling when it comes to Rabatinov. He's not going to be able to compete with 
the takedown game as far as he will get taken down. Question is, will he get up and get himself back into a neutral position with Robotanov, or is he going to get taken down and control? I don't think that Robotanov's going to take him down. I think he's going to stand that's, with him. And, that's the yeah. question. Yeah. With Gazi, like, he's not too concerned. Like, he'll he'll get the takedowns when they're easy. If you overcommit and I get to an easy body lock takedown or double yeah. leg or single he'll leg dump, he'll do it. But even then, when he takes you down, he'll jump in, land a couple shots, and he'll back out if it's not feeling comfortable. If he's not in the half guard, if he's not in the passing guard, if he's not into like an, uh, an advantage position, he'll just hop back out and say, okay, come back to your feet. He's not a big 55-pounder. No, one. he could be 145. He could be 145. One is yeah. he's not a big 55-pounder. Two is he his stand-up is really damn good. He's slick on the feet. He's not afraid to exchange. He enjoys being on the feet. He's like a, he's like a uh, and he's got good power. Wrestler. He's a wrestler that fell in love with his power. Yeah, <laughs> is really what he is. I mean, he's got good wrestling. He just chooses not to use it. And so, um, I mean, it, it'll make for an interesting fight. I wonder if he will come out wrestling or if he'll or if he'll stay, you know, keeping this thing on the feet and just threaten the takedowns when they come easy. I think that's more of his approach. It seems to be his approach almost with everyone. Mm-hmm. will be I'll just sprawl and brawl until until you make a mistake and I can get an easy takedown to score me a couple points, land a couple big shots from the top. And then if I get in trouble or start feeling like I'm in trouble or you're threatening submissions, I'll back out and just get back to the feet and then take you again, take you down again at will. He's he's so good. Godsy is. He's just very well rounded. He's just not a big guy. So uh Dufort's got his hands full for sure. And I think that Godsy is someone that will will probably end up making it to the finals, just barring some sort of I don't want to say fluke, but some some sort of incident where he gets caught and put into a submission. He does have a weakness. Gatsy does. If I would say there was a weakness, it would be his submission defense. He he leaves his arms sometimes in position. He overcommits sometimes on some big shots from the ground and pound. Um, you know, his his submission defense is there. It's just not if you put him against someone like a Brent Primus, that would make for a very interesting fight. Because uh Brent being big in size, Godsy not being big. And Brent being really crafty and on the ground, flexibility for that guy. And Brent being super strong, Godsy not being a big guy. He is physically strong, but I don't feel on maybe this, the the strength of a Brent premise. There's a lot that, that you could leave to the imagination with that finals. If they were both in the finals with Godsy and Brent premise, it would be yeah. it'd be awesome. Next fight. Brent premise against Clay <laughs> Collard. Uh, Brent has uh, he's done very well in his, his couple of fights. Uh, submission wins um, in the first second fight. You know, he was uh, in a position where you're taking a look at he was doing well. He took some damage in the fight, but came back and showed, you know, what he's made of as far as uh, uh, being able to take over in that fight. Clay Collard has had a good fight against Patricky Pitbull. And then he had a fight with Mads Burnell and found out Mads Burnell can stand on the feet and. He can throw back, and when he gets on the ground, if there's, you know, Clay has got good wrestling takedown defense to a point, but he doesn't have good ability to get off of his back. His ability to scramble off of being off his back is not the best there is, and I think people have seen this as the blueprint for, look at A.J. McKee. A.J. McKee takes him down, puts him down, keeps him down, submits him. Mads Burnell was able to take him down, keep him down. Didn't submit him, but if you want to beat Clay Collard, it's don't be on the don't be standing on your feet all the all the time with him and let him attack your body because he's got beautiful body attacks. He's got great boxing. If you're Brent Primus, I want to take him down and I want to submit him. If you're Clay Collard, I want to keep this fight on the on the feet and I want to attack Brent Primus, go to the body, then finally go to the head. It's it's one of those old style. This is grappler versus striker. It is an old style of, you know, like UFC one, UFC two, three, four, whatever it is. You know, it's like you said, the stand up versus grappler. <clears throat> the difference is, is that Clay's got some, he's got decent takedown defense, and, mm-hmm. but his submission defense is trash. And I like Clay. I love watching him on the feet. I love, well, I like the love the pressure that he puts on a lot of these fighters and just breaks them mentally. Mm-hmm. Brent Primus being the size that he is, he is a huge 155 pounder. Huge. He probably walks 202, 200, somewhere in there. We talk, I talk to him all the time about how big are you now? He's big. 
You know, he's not the fastest of guys, but neither is Clay Collard. There you okay? go. Uh, his wrestling is not the greatest, but his physical size helps him with his wrestling. If he presses you to the fence, he's able to basically scoop the legs under the butt and just lift and slam you or suck your legs out. And once he gets on top, you're trying to move someone who's about 180, 185, somewhere in there, you know, by the time it's fight time. So he may be made 155. By the time he's fighting you, he's probably around 182, 186, 185, somewhere in there, depending on his weight cut and how well he was able to rehydrate. Clay's also a very tall guy, but not a super big guy. And look, if this fight hits the ground, I, I don't, I just don't know. Like Clay, or not Clay, but Brent is so good on the ground, especially if Brent is on top and he takes that back. I could see him getting the finish pretty quickly in the first round. I don't care if it's from the back or with Brent on top. Clay Collard cannot be on the ground with Brent Primus for a long time. No. If he's down there with Brent Primus, he's he's going to be defending and in danger the entire time. Mm -hmm. Unless he has knocked Brent down and hurt him to the point where the brain is just not functioning right. This is one where you know, I, I truly look and say, I give the, the fight to Clay Collard on the feet. Not that Brent Primus can't stand and fight, but... Clay Collard is the better overall striker, but on the ground, there's a huge difference in these guys. And let me throw, Brent, let me Brent throw is one, dangerous down there. Let me throw a little one little caveat. Is it Brent Primus has got really good leg kicks, very hard yeah. leg kicks. Yeah. Clay Heavy. Collard is a walk forward type fighter. If yeah. Brent gets started earlier on the calf kicks, there's just really no reason. I think there, there, there's nothing that Clay could, could do. Because look, if I kick, if Brent starts kicking his leg early, and he just falls over. He gets hit on a shot and goes to his butt. There's Clay's not jumping into his guard. And so if I'm if I if I'm Brent Primus, I'm just hacking at the leg in the, the whole first round, not caring if like I get knocked down or if I get pushed over or if I lose balance and fall. Like, come on down, buddy. Oh yeah, you know my rubber guard, my attack and, and from the Clay's bottom. Clay's not going to do that. Clay's not going to do that. So as the fight goes on by round with Clay's leg kicks, we saw what he did to Michael Chandler. We've seen what he's done to other fighters. You know, in Bellator when he was fighting there. Calf kicks are a big deal to him. If you get started early with those calf kicks, I think he's going to have a lot of success because then it just takes away the movement of, of Clay. Yeah. And then it, it makes it even harder for Clay to sit down on his punches and throw power because he's afraid of getting the calf kicked. And also just it's bearing that weight, having to be able to kind of sit down and throw heavy shots. You it's hard, put hard down to push, push off of a leg that doesn't, you know, yep. it has no feeling to it other than pain. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm looking forward. Like when I originally said, like, do you think that fight should have been the main event in Josh Oliveira and Impa? It's because I think the Brent Primus and Clay Collar fight is a fantastic fight. I think the Rob Wilkinson fight and the Yogs fight should be should have been the main event. And I get what you're saying in terms of Impa being okay, he's the former champion. But hey, that was last year. That doesn't mean anything this year. <laughs> well, doesn't mean anything. So, but uh, is there any other fights on here you want to talk about? No, nah, you got, you know, the last one on the main card is the opening. And that's, you know, Biagio Ali Walsh, who is the grandson of Muhammad Ali. That will be his second professional fight. He's fighting a guy named uh, Brian Stapleton. First professional fight. Brian was four and four as an amateur. Um, this is one of those ones that, you know, look, the PFL is absolutely uh, looking to build, you know, Biagio up. And so they're they're feeding him people that, look, he's... First, he's a one-fight professional. He's mm -hmm. fighting a guy that is a debuting professional. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see it all the time in boxing, right? Yep. Guys are fighting guys that are 0-10. Yep. Uh, you know, <laughs> so, well, uh, you know, I'm going to give a little uh, love to my boy Danny Sabatello. And Mads Bernal oh, yeah. also is on the prelims. But Danny Sabatello, uh, you know, he's looking to make a splash. He's fighting uh, L. I don't even know who L. Daron, Darion is. Daron. But uh, I don't know who he is. I just know Lizarro that Danny. Zaro Darion? Dayon, Dayron, Dayron, Dayron. Look, he, uh, Danny is, if anything, fun to talk to, fun to see the lead up to the fight. I'm going to be spending some time with him and Mads Burnell and Brent Primus this week at the the um, at the fights. I'll be headed out to the PFL with Jordan Oliver as well. So I have those four fighters that I'll be doing some behind the scene footage um, for one of my sponsors that I'll be working with ours. I should say our sponsor that we work with. So we're doing some Thank extra you. behind the scene content for them. It's going to be fun, man. I'm looking forward to working uh, with these guys. Jordan Oliver is a beast, man. He's just a oh, fantastic a wrestling stud. Maz Brunel, you saw what he could do in his last fight, you know, just piecing up Clay Collard and doing some work on the feet. And Danny Sabatello, it's just always fun to be around. He's hilarious. If you guys don't like the way he trash talks, but he's a really good person off the mat. 
everyone that we've ever talked to uh, at American Top Team said, man, he's a hard worker. He's a positive guy. They all love him. Across that way. They all actually love him a lot. And Brett Primus is, he's a salt of earth kind of guy. You know, he just wants to go out there and do the best he can. And uh, he's just one of those guys that I just enjoy talking to because he's got a good heart. And you can tell he's got a good heart. He wants good for a lot of people. Yeah, but the the thing about Brent Primus that you're looking at right now, look, Brent is getting towards the end of his career. Yeah. Let's just be honest. And this whole PFL tournament has been fantastic for him. And if he can get this win, he's got a chance to close off his career with another title and a million dollars in the bank. And that is not a bad thing. If he decides to come back and do it again, he can do that. But if he wants to close it out, it's not a bad way to close it out. John, you know if he wins it, he ain't closing it out. He's going to try it again. I'm just, like, I'm the, just throwing that I'm out just there. Try, like, I'm just trying to give him you know, the little bit of, hey, hey, Brent, that's a good idea right here. John, you already know, man. You know he's not. Like, if I win a million, I can do it again. Of I'm course I can do it again. number two. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good-tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. Um, hey guys, I want to remind you guys that this whole episode is brought to you by BetUS and John. They've been they've been dropping some fantastic odds, but uh, you know we have we're going to be talking a little bit about the UFC right now. We're pulling up the odds for them as well for the main event, co-main event this weekend's pay per view. So if you guys don't, if you guys gamble, if you guys like to play some bets, make sure you guys listen to us on the BetUS uh, platform and just let you guys know this whole thing was brought to you by BetUS. Let's go ahead and jump right into the ufc main event there is a pay-per-view this weekend got a great card for the main card the main, main card's card. a good card main card's a main good card's card. a good card yeah you got you know the champion at 185 the middleweight champion drikas duplessis going up against israel adesanya <laughs> it's it's so funny that there's been heat between these two guys even though they've never faced off and it kind of went away and now it's back with this one and you look and you go I'm watching Duplessis and his training, and his his trainer is 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 using a cattle prod on him, and I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> but hey, if it works, okay. He says he says it, it, it gets him to pay attention. So you know, whatever you want to do, I've I've been tased too many times, and I've been hit with a cattle prod. I don't let people just touch the bottom of my feet with cattle prods. <laughs> If they're doing that, I have probably been kidnapped. Ah. <laughs> George has got one. There you go. There's a difference between that little handheld stun gun and stuff. That one, you yeah. just put your put it like this. It burns you, but you just it just makes your fingers do funny things. Yeah, you guys, you guys are not very, not very smart. Don't even try. It. No thanks, man. Go, George. George has got a little. Uh, what are they? What are those called? What is that thing called? Huh? That's called a stun gun. Yeah, is it a stun gun? Yeah. It's the most powerful stun gun you can get on Amazon. I got it from my buddy Chin. Ch- oh, oh Chin is that for Chin? I'm, I love Chin Daddy. He wanted to tase Brendan and Brian, but they wouldn't let him. No, you got. Oh, but, man. I mean, he probably needs one for just walking around LA in that shithole. That's what he's for his safety. Um, uh, John. The, look, there's a lot of animosity between these two. I mean, it all started. Is. We understand how this whole thing started, correct? Drickus basically said, I'm the only true African champion. And I'm the only true African fighter that, you know, to win a title, he wants to bring it back to, to Africa. I mean, he ain't lying. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's That's like, the thing that really is crazy. People are getting all mad about it, but he ain't lying. He's no, born and raised and still trains in Africa. His, his words are true, even though, like, Adesanya was born uh, in Nigeria. He was, uh, you know, raised there for a while then you know his parents moved him to uh new zealand and that's been his home country and you mm-hmm. know you can sit there and uh, you can say whatever you want there's there's no lies here as far as mm-hmm. this is a south african man and, you know yeah he's white so what but well, he trains he still trains in africa though oh yes he does and so that's that's the point i think he was trying to make but 
that's how this whole beef started was yeah. he took a shot at you know at Kamar Usman at Izzy and at I believe Francis and the three of them he's like look I'm the only true Afri I will be the only true African champion I want to bring the belt back to Africa yeah. and I mean like I said there was no lies detected but I could see how they took it as a jab at them yeah it's a jab and and Izzy is is out to try to set the record straight. Like, hey, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm 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 African. First off, does so, it matter? I mean, it does to them apparently. Well, no, does it matter? No. I mean, John, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not the one out there getting my face punched in either. <laughs> so that's another benefit. The, but but I mean, the, whole, the, the whole point is, like, all of that it goes out the window when they fight. Do, it's not a it's not about where you're from. It's about what you bring. Do they show respect at the end? Yes. You think so? I do. I mean, I do. I don't know, man. That even being thrown even around the way it was, the, the I think know, there's a little bit more to it than just the normal. Look, Izzy's done a lot of things. If you take a look, you know, he did the whole thing if you remember with Paulo Costa. Okay? I'm telling you right now, if I was refereeing that fight, I would have stopped the fight. I would have fucking taken him off. I would have fucking taken points from him. I would have oh, wow. done I would have fucking changed his attitude as far as what what do you think you're doing? Okay? Uh-uh. You don't do that. So you're a dictator. Got it. Yeah, I am. Noted. Absolutely. <laughs> you you don't do things in that cage that are disrespectful to the sport. That's true. Disrespectful to your promoter, disrespectful to the fans, disrespectful to your opponent. You don't do it. You know? You get the chance to, you, you can punch him in the face. Yeah. You don't have to do the other bullshit. That's the one great thing about fighting, right? You can you can literally get to punch the guy in the face. Okay, yeah. like, hey, take this. You said that about my mama? I got this. I got yeah. this right here. That's and it. You can, yeah. yeah. Um, but look, look, the betting odds pretty much have it equal at BetUS. So Israel Adesanya is a minus 120. Drickus is a minus 110. The over on, the over under on it is four and a half at plus the, on the over, four and a half at plus 115. And the under, four and a half, is minus 145. Well, how are you looking That's, at it? How do, I think it's going to get finished. Someone's going to get finished. You're thinking there's going to be a finish. Okay. I actually kind of think Drick is going to finish him from the top position, ground and pound him. He's going to knock him out on the ground. Really? That's what I think is going to happen. Okay. He's going to have a hard time in that first round. Not a get, bad call. I'm not saying it's a bad call. It's just No. I, I think he's going to have a hard time getting Izzy down in the first but as the fight goes on, and his, after every takedown Izzy loses, it's going to become easier and easier. And on the ground, I don't think that Izzy has the the uh, the defense to stop vicious ground and pound, like ground and pound that will do some serious damage. Jan Blachowicz was afraid to open up. He's like, man, I don't want to let him up. I don't think that Drickus, he doesn't want to be on the feet too long, but he's also not afraid to be on the feet too long. Yeah, but Jan Blachowicz was a lot bigger. Then uh, uh, Drickus is not a small dude. Whoa, 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 hold on. But hold on. Then this is this is where Drickus is 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. Adesanya is, I think, 35. So I I always like the young champion. Mm -hmm. That's a good call. But if there's one thing that I do know, and you know it's true, I have a guy that's six foot, maybe six foot one in Drickus. He's shorter than Sean Strickland, right? Sean Strickland 6'2". So I know he's shorter than Strickland. And I know Izzy's 6'4". It is not easy to get those takedowns that he likes to get with a guy that's real tall. Because he doesn't scoop and lift a lot. He, he takes and he sucks in and he drags down and he turns. And when you got a guy that's able to keep his feet and drag his feet in those situations, it becomes very difficult to take him down. And so I look and I go... Izzy's going to present a lot of problems, in my opinion, with Drickus taking him down. Not that he can't get him down. I'm not saying he can't. But he's going to present problems. And how much gas. I've seen Drickus put out a ton of energy in a fight, but I've also seen him get tired. You know, his fight mm -hmm. against Darren Till. Look, Darren Till was, you know, taking a hell of an ass whipping in that fight. And then Drickus was all over him. But there got to a point where he got tired. And I've seen Adesanya no matter what. I've seen him get tired to a point, but I've seen him go. And I've seen him have a big gas tank. And I think both of them have a big gas tank. But if Drickus does not utilize his takedowns in a smart fashion and burns excessive energy without getting a result, 
you're gonna have problems in this because in i believe in the stand-up there's a clear difference between the two there is a clear difference between the two i just think the physical like when you say he's always six one you know maybe not even six two he's six foot six one yeah I, i would agree with the height thing but the actual physical size brent premise is not a tall guy but he is a not thick, short. stout guy. Prim Primus is not short. He's five, he's like 5'10". 5'11". 5'10", 5'11". He's like my height, John. I've shrunk. Dude, you're you're not you're five six, if anything. You shut your mouth. <laughs> this is, I'm no Michael Chandler, dude. Let's not, let's be real. Let's be real. Um, look, he's George. He's look up, a, look up the the height of fucking Josh Thompson because he's lying right now. He's five, ten, if, five ten and three quarters. Five ten, my ass. Five ten and three quarters, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> just all quarters. fucking neck just ah, look at man. that thing look at that thing five ten and three quarters that's good did you see good. the artwork i posted someone did the fan artwork of you and i oh, oh yeah. geez john no was, I, I saw the i saw there was one that my wife pulled out there was a painting of me it was like yeah. it was it that's, was that's hilarious. how you scare small children oh these people man they they really <laughs> they, we had a guy i'm gonna give him a little love even though he made me look like a Gandalf or not Gandalf the Gandalf the little, the little dwarf guy with the red real buff and fat in the neck oh there you go baby there it is oh I saw it I saw it there it is I thought it was hilarious <laughs> yeah that's oh. the same one I said that you scare small children with is mine ah yeah I mean, look at that <laughs> dude look your nose got out of prison your, your nose has definitely gotten wider you've been hitting the face a lot oh I definitely yeah and your nose and your ears never stop growing so as I get older they keep going <laughs> <laughs> you know look at that look at that but uh, whoever that was i don't know who it's it was that did it, but hey i think it's hilarious i want nice the real job. artwork though you're gonna have to send it to me i want the real one um it looks John, like a you... want, looks like a wanted poster <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it felt like it was one uh, that's why i said it looked like we both got out of prison like that's yeah. our mug shots going into prison oh Back, no like, it was an old remember like the old days and they had and had you in the black and white prison outfits and it just reminded me of something oh, yeah. like that you'd see but John, let's go back to the Izzy and Drickus fight. What are your thoughts on the odds? I mean, for Bet US, it's minus one twenty, and then a minus a one ten. I think that's pretty even. I think it's I think it's fair to it's say gonna, it's a one ten. I think they're going to change a little bit you know, yeah. as, to, as the week closes off, but it's going to end up you're going to be somewhere in the area of minus one fifteen for both. Mm-hmm. Somewhere, somewhere towards that, maybe one you know minus one ten, maybe a plus on one of them to barely, but it's. Basically, you're choosing who you think is going to win the fight. Yeah, this is and one of those things. It's a little bit more difficult for me to put money down because it is such an evenly matched fight. Also, is Izzy being away for such a long period of time, and all I've heard is he's been working on his wrestling. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Smart. So if that's the case, his submission defense and his wrestling, then he stands a better, I think, a better chance if this fight hits the ground. But if I'm looking at it, the odds say it's uh, under at four and a half is minus 145. I think that's a fair bet. I think is he either is he either clips him on the feet, is able to finish him, or Drickus takes him down and just mauls him down there. Maybe gets the finish before the four and a half rounds, which I think he can. Um, but it's more likely that the fight doesn't go five rounds. I I would agree. I, I do believe that there's going to be a finish somewhere in this, and it's be, and it's because many you know, Drickus comes lunging in with his uh stand up many times mm-hmm. he's he's a linear guy that i'm, I'm going and he kind of tries to tuck his chin you when you have the skill set that izzy does and all of the tools that he has he brings the knee up he can bring his knee up to his chin okay so he can definitely touch the chin of Drickus. he has beautiful hands as far as his uppercuts are beautiful the way he you know he puts shots on people he's a sniper and it, like you said I do think that Drickus looks at what Jan Blahovich did and says, I want, I want to emulate, you know, emulate that. Mm-hmm. And if he does, he's going to win the fight, you know? And so I, I do think it's an even, uh, an even fight. It's just the question of, do you believe that you've seen Adesanya, you know, be the champion? You've seen him become the champion again. Can he become the champion for a third time? That is a big, big question. We're going to see 35 years old. He's been away from the sport for about eight months, nine months. Oh, but let's talk real quick about their shorts. I, like I mean, one, but I have a question. How did Izzy get the black and gold? He's not the champion. Former I thought champion. it was like the black and gold was the champion. Two-time former champion. So I, I, I agree with it. you, but hold on. Here's the difference. 
the difference in those shorts is what color is his name? I can't see it. Oh, it's white. Mm -hmm. What not, what color is Duplessis? Oh, it's uh, well, is it gold? I can't gold. tell. It's gold. gold. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be because he wants to have <laughs> the he has the it looks like the African flag around his the South African flag around his waistline there. Oh, Duplessis. What it looked like for Drickus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, look, I, I like that Venom is um, allowing the fighters pretty much to kind of pick and choose how they do their shorts. I like Obviously, this. I like this whole thing with the champions' shorts and everything. I, I do. Think it's great. I do. I, it's a lot better than what they had with fucking Reebok. Reebok was uh, a Reebok. total trash thing. It was trash. I don't like, know trash is my word for today, guys. Thank you, dude. <laughs> I, I'll never forget they because you know they they always you know if you had something that wasn't Reebok, they wanted to take a piece of tape and put it over your stuff or anything like that and so they you know they they sit here and they give me a, a box of sh for shoes and these things are like fucking i thought they were made out of the out of from the dutch they're like wood they were stiff as hell i go who the fuck's gonna i'm not wearing those things i wore i wore jordans there was no nike swoosh they couldn't tell what it was so i never had tape put on me but uh it was just crazy the whole thing was like Oh, you can't have anything. Okay. You know what was crazy? To touch on that, all the fighters had to wear their shoes. Yeah. Then you see Dana up there wearing Nikes. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're like, they... like, okay, aren't you part of the promotion? Like, it, aren't you supposed to be kind of being the positive, <laughs> like this, reinforcement? This, this all comes down to do as I say, not as, not I, as do. I do. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. <laughs> John, I'm kind of excited for the, the co-main event. Uh, the co-main event is a good fight. You're talking about Ursa, who has really been just on fire. Yeah, he had, had the loss in his last fight, but... He's been fantastic and going up against Kaikara France. Both these guys love the stand up game. And uh, this is one where I don't think it's going to end up. <laughs> Sorry, bless I, me. I, I believe someone is going to end up going to sleep in this one. And uh, this is a really good fight. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying Are to you myself. dying on me? All right, everyone. What we want to do is take and, and in the count of three we're gonna say breathe josh one two three breathe josh breathe breathe <laughs> there he goes again no yeah. he's got he's got covid <laughs> simplex 10 i think he's allergic to 125ers <clears throat> oh man sorry guys so if anyone ever wanted to watch the death of josh thompson this is what you're seeing at this moment because he's dying <laughs> oh man, it's horrible. My eyes start watering, and then like I start coughing, and it's the, I get allergies here. I got them. Well, you know what's funny? I got them worse in California, which yeah. is strange. Everyone keeps telling me they're real bad here, but I mean, I get them. I get them right around this time: August, September, a little bit in October. Then I get it again in April, May, pretty much fall and spring. But yeah, um, look, the Ursig fight with Kai Car France. I just think like Ursa is one of those guys you just look at and you're like, oh, this guy's a nerd. This guy can't fight. And this guy can fight, John. He is so good. Yeah, he is. And watching his uh watching his last fight. He's better than he, even he knows. No, I agree. I agree. He's fantastic, man. I, I I just I look at Kai being gone for a bit, coming back. The speed of Kai Car France may be a there problem for Ursa. That's a problem right there. The speed and Kai's got some. He's got some power too. I just look at Ursig and he can take this fight to the ground. And on the ground, he's way better than Kai Carafrance. Kai may be able to get up, but Ursig can also keep this feet on. He can also keep this on the feet. He doesn't need to take him down, but he should threaten the takedowns. He should oh, absolutely try to get one or two of them there because on the ground he's better than Kai. Kai's faster and probably has more power than him on the feet than Ursig. But that fight there is. It's a. I would say it's probably more 60, 40 Kai Car France on the feet, but on the ground it's like ninety ten. Well, I don't. I don't think it's sixty forty on the feet. I'm being honest. I, I do think that Kai Car France probably got the faster hands overall, but yeah. uh, the length of Ursic is it is going to be. He has an advantage there, 
and look, he throws beautiful counters. And the guy, his stand-up is good. You know, it's not like it's, you know, oh, it's an afterthought and he's always trying to drag people to the ground. He doesn't have to. His stand-up is good. I'm not saying that, I wouldn't say that Kaikara France has a, has the edge in the stand-up. No. But I don't think it's a 20% edge. It's a little bit. <clears throat> what would you say? 55-45? I would say, yeah. At yeah a somewhere max. around that, 50-50? At a max. Yeah, I would say it's close to like 52-48. Oh wow, you're getting that. You're getting that direct, huh? We're not going by fives. I'm, I'm I was trying to keep honest. the math simple. I can't <laughs> John, do that. <laughs> John, I are trying to bl- blow me out of the water with this hard math stuff. Uh, look, the betting odds have Steve Versig at one fifty five, Kai Car France at plus one twenty five. The over at two and a half is minus two fifty. Wow. And under two and a, uh, two and a half is plus two hundred. This fight for sure is going past two and a half rounds. For sure, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take the over on that at two and two fifty. But I guess the question is, can Kai Car France get it done at plus one twenty five? Oh, you can get it done. Look, he's got fast hands, and if he, for a guy at one hundred twenty five pounds, he showed that he has power enough to hurt mm-hmm. people and put them away. It's not the one punch power most of the time. You know, he, even even the Cody Garbrandt fight, you look, you know, there was multiple shots landed. That's what ends up putting him away. But he's accurate. And yeah. those multiple shots, that's what you're looking for, you know, when you're looking at, at lighter weight guys. So he definitely has the ability to end the fight. And for Ursig with the with the pointy nose and the pointy chin, he's got a chin though. He's got a beard on him, man. Yeah. The guy the shots. guy can take a shot and he knows how to deliver him. Yep. It's it's a clean fight. I'm obviously I'm gonna lean towards Steve Ursig, as you guys can probably tell in the tone of my voice and the way I'm talking about Steve Ursig. But I do believe that this fight will go over two and a half. And I think that um, at minus 250, I feel like it's a pretty safe bet if you wanted to throw some money down there. 250 is a little steep for my blood. You know what? The minus 250 is a little steep for my blood to win 100 bucks. But yeah. some people like any, to pick Anytime that you're going over that two mark, trust me. Yeah, that's true. Be smart. You better be like almost 100, 100%, like 110%. You got to be thinking. Uh, next fight, John. Matthias Gamrot. Taking on the man that takes on everybody, Dan Hooker. I, I somehow the UFC just doesn't like poor Dan Hooker. Oh, it's so okay. it's so bad. I, I feel so. I bad. don't know what it is, man. The guy fights his ass off. He's freaking good, and you're gonna put him against basically his nemesis in life, a guy that is just a a go for broke wrestler, will not stop, who is gonna take you down and maul you, and that's you know. That's not Dan Hooker's game and stuff, but that's what this fight is. And so, you know, you got to look, and I, I got to say that, you know, Hooker can win it. I'm not saying he can't. He's got good stand-up. He's got length. Uh, he can be dangerous, but G- Gamrot is going to be working towards the takedowns. And if he gets them, it's going to be a long night for uh, Dan Hooker. It might be a short night for Dan Hooker. <laughs> that's what may happen. True. Um I kind of agree with you. Like, I feel like they don't do Dan Hooker any favors. Man. For a guy, I mean, take a look at the people he's fought. Mm -hmm. He's got a hell of a resume on fighting tough people. Uh, Do you look at him as like another Cowboy Cerrone? Yeah, in a lot of ways, but but he doesn't have the same appeal, in my opinion. I think the UFC loved Cowboy. You know, but what's there not to love about Cowboy? I'm Cowboy's not, amazing. Hold on. I'm not yeah. saying they're wrong. I, I agree with you. Cowboy was, you know, he was fun. And Dan Hooker is very similar in that he'll take any fight against anybody, basically at any time, basically at any weight. You know, I think he's gone too far going to 145 when he did. Mm-hmm. I think that one was not uh, smart. But Hooker is just, he's incredibly good. You know, his fight against Dustin Poirier. The one, you know, during COVID. Oh, God damn. I mean, what a fight and what a just a it showed heart in staying in that fight because, you know, he was winning that the first two rounds. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy shit, man, he's just taking off. But, you know, he's fought like Islam Makachev. He took that as a, you know, a last minute fight. You look and you go, hey, that's crazy. He, his fight with Michael Chandler was, you know, he was put in a position that, he was kind of like, oh, you're the guy, you know, he's going to face the guy mm-hmm. coming in and how are you going to do? 
just didn't have the right game plan right away. He was trying to stay on that outside to use his length. Never got the chance. He got hit with a shot. But, man, I tell you what, he fights, and he fights tough people and gets wins. You know, his fight, uh, when he fought frickin' uh, Edson Barbosa, I know he lost that one. That was a body shot. That, that would have folded anybody. God damn, man. You know, he just... It's always when he gets to this level of fighter that you see all of a sudden the L happens mm -hmm. with Hooker. And so I look and I go, this is going to be a hard fight for him. I guess the way that I'm looking at this, I'm gonna, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, is that they're trying to fast track the guys that potentially could un... un uh, Unseat Islam. Unseat Islam. Like you've got to get those guys there. Guys like um Sarukian, guys like Gamra, guys that are up there that could wrestle with him, guys that could push him and try to get him, at least challenge him. Um, <clears throat> you know, Volk had a great fight with them in, in the first fight because Volk was so hard to take down and hold down. But like we said, is with with Islam, it was I think the weight cut situation during that fight was a big deal. We showed him the second fight, but then again, it's not fair to make that same analogy during that fight because um, Volk didn't have a full camp that fight. But I feel like they are trying to fast track the ones that could potentially give him some problems, threaten him a little bit, make him uh, test test Islam. I mean, Sarukian to me is someone that can do it, but then Sarukian also lost to to Gamera. So there's the two of them are very equal in wrestling. Will they be enough? Will they be good enough wrestlers to take? We'll be able to control uh, Islam, be able to take him down repeatedly over five rounds. And I don't think either one of them can really stand. So yeah. I don't think either one of them can stand with Islam. I think sarukin has got power. That's obviously been proven. But does he have the power to keep throwing that way for five rounds? We're going to find out. But I, I feel I feel the conspiracy thing going on a little bit in my, high, my mind that they're trying to fast track the guys that can wrestle and get out there and challenge them. <coughs> yeah. We'll see. Next fight. We will. But you take a look. You know, it's funny because the whole Gamera thing, he's been fantastic. His one setback was uh, Benil Dariush, mm -hmm. who, you know, Benil had a beautiful fight against him, fought great, and then from that point has had nothing but trouble. But, you know, Gamera is, he's going to come after you. You know what he's going to do. The problem is stopping him. It's hard well, John... Dan Hooker is a plus 240. Mate, uh, Mateus Gamera is a minus 330. It seems about it seems about right. Yeah. Seems yeah. about right. The over on it is two and a half. That's a minus 265. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I could see it that way. Gamera, his does he have the submissions to finish to finish him? I, I don't know if he has the, the submissions. Not any, he can not hold an him easy down. person to finish. Yeah, he's not. You know, so he, yeah. I don't know. We're going to find out. But the, the over on it is two and a half at minus 265, and the under is two and a half at plus 215. So, I mean, that's another one. Seems a little too rich for my blood. We're getting into these like odds. Oh, these fights are so not evenly matched, but right now they seem kind of either evenly matched or one sided. Yeah. Even though they're good matchups, anything can happen. Next fight. Well, the next fight you have heavyweight. You've got Tai Tuiavasa, who always seems to fight when it comes to being in Australia, which is totally understandable because he's a hell of a character. Going up against Jarzinho Rosenstruck. And this is a heavyweight fight that will... It's not going to go the, the three round. I'm just saying <laughs> it. And I say that, and it probably will now. But, you know, I love Tai that, uh, you know, he's he's a gamer. He goes after people. He could take a big shot. Uh, he's going to have his hands full with uh, Rosenstruck as far as the power, but he can output as far as putting shots on Jarzino. Jarzino, when he's getting a lot of shots coming his way, tends to stop his offense and become very defensive. So I could definitely see Ty getting a win here. But if you're looking at the power, the power's got to go with Jarzino. Yeah, see, I'm not looking at the power, man. I'm looking at the under one and a half rounds is minus 210. I'm probably taking that bet, John. I know 200 is the mark, but I'm I'm looking the under at two, uh, under one and a half for minus 210. It seems like a pretty safe bet to me. One of not these bad. guys is getting knocked out. Literally, Tai Vasa takes about 45 seconds to get going. 
Yeah. And once he gets going, the fight's on. He doesn't That's slow it. down until the fight's over. Sometimes at his apparel, but sometimes at his advantage. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But then you can look at it too. Is that right now a, a tie is also a plus 185. Rosenstruck is also a minus 225. Yeah, but that I, makes I, sense. I, it makes sense. I feel safe though taking the under at one and a half um, at minus 210. I feel safe there. <clears throat> this fight will not go the distance. This fight probably won't go past one and a half rounds. So I'm taking that. I would probably even lean, like you said, towards taking Ty. Ty has more ways of winning this fight. Ty can wrestle a little bit. He can't get yeah, this fight can. to the ground. If he Will wrestles, he uh, that's yeah. the question. Yeah, I don't I don't know. But if he does, he can get on top. And Jarzinho, if there's one thing that we've seen, getting off of his back mm. is definitely not something that he's good at. No, turtle uh, on the back is definitely what he boy, does. And he, he ends up turning instead of getting to his side and building a base up he just he wants to get back to his feet and leaves all these openings and ty ty could take advantage of those so this is actually a really this is a good matchup i really am, i'm enjoy, i'm looking forward to this one and i think it's going to be a barn burner I, I do think the same as you it's going to be over in the first round i i'll have to look it up i want to see what the odds are on ty getting a submission win <laughs> <laughs> see just throw like 20 could bucks happen. Jack, can he get the submission away? It could happen. It could. Next fight, John. We got Jing Liang Li going up against Carlos Prathis. This is uh, in the welterweight division. You know, Jing Liang is just, he's tough. You know, he's, he's come a long ways with his abilities and stuff. Um, his, his striking is actually not fluid, but it's powerful. He can, he can hit with some power. And his wrestling, the leech has become, you know, pretty good as being a leech mm -hmm. as far as getting on people and not letting them up and just doing damage. He's got a great gas tank. You know, he's been beat by very good people. You know, and you look at Pratis and you say, very, he's a tough competitor, but someone that these guys match up very well. They do match up well, but then <clears throat> with uh, Jing Liang, he's a plus 250. Pratis is a minus 340. It's about I mean, they right, got him though. favored quite uh, quite a bit, though, John. But that's that's <clears throat> about right, you know. When you take a look at, he's called the nightmare for a reason, <clears throat> because like he can fight everywhere. He's got a good ground game. He's got big time power. He's got a ton of fucking KOs. So yeah. his submission his submission game is you know there if he wants, but he likes knocking people out, and for the most part, all of his wins have come by knockouts. Yeah. So. Have you guys seen this picture of Jing Ling and Shavkat next to each other? No. <laughs> They're both 170 pounders. Holy yeah. cow. Shavkat's a big dude, man. He's a big yeah. dude. <clears throat> but, John, you know, the fight that I'm actually most looking forward to, not most, but I'm looking forward to that it's on the undercard is Ricardo Ramos versus Josh Kulabau. Should be a good fight. Kulabau's just fun for me. He's fun to watch fight. Dude, he's always bringing the action. He's he got a lot of talent, kids. man. He's got a lot of talent. He's not fancy anywhere, but, man, he's really good. Yeah. No, and you know, when you look at him, too, he doesn't look the part as if, like, he's some no. world-class fighter. No, he has a little no. chub around the waist. You know, he comes out. He fights hard. I don't know. He's just fun. For me, <clears throat> something about him, I always want to tune in to watch him fight. He's a minus 145. Ramos is a plus 115. The under on this is even money at two and a half. The over two and a half is minus 130. I mean, I could see it. I, I don't really see it going under. I don't. I, yeah. I think it's going to pretty much go the distance on this. So that, that's a minus 130 on that, the two and a half. I can see this fight going the distance. But look, for me, it's cool about. I just like watching him fight. He brings it every single time. He does kick to the body quite a bit. He's just a fun fight, fighter to watch. Yeah. Anytime you guys get an opportunity to watch him fight, check him out, man. He's fun. Any yeah. other guys on here you want to chat about? No, I would tell you that the other fight that I think is going to be a really good matchup is Keenan Song is going to be taking on Ricky Glenn. And Ricky Glenn, okay. is a, he's just a tough dude, and so is Keenan Song. And I think that's going to, that matchup, just the way that they both fight, I think it's going to be a, a really interesting and fun fight. So give them a shout out. I know we covered this a little bit like two weeks ago or whatever when the odds dropped, but look, and I know this is a separate pay-per-view, but the Max Holloway, Ilya Taporia early odds is plus 155. Oh, Max it's Holloway. going down. Yep. And then the Ilya Taporia is minus 185. If you guys haven't placed your bet at BetUS on the early odds, check 
out the Max Holloway and Ilya Taporia. I'm taking Max at plus 155. I think he wins this fight. The reach, the speed, the athleticism, the movement on the outside. Just a, um, uh, You should have taken him at plus 165 like I did. Yeah, you <laughs> should have taken him at plus 165. Yeah, at 155, though, I'll still take it right now. You got to get on it because everyone's going to jump on this bandwagon. You're going to end up, it's going to, I think by the time it ends, it'll be close to even money. Yep, I agree with So you. I'm going to get cashed out now. All right, guys. Hey, hopefully that, I hope you guys enjoyed this show. That's going to wrap up our PFL and uh, UFC talk for this weekend. And uh, John, take us away, buddy. The great weekend of fights. I hope you watch all of them from Hollywood, Florida. You can see the PFL. And then you're taking a look at the UFC from Perth, Australia. You got to tune in. I've already bought the pay-per-view. I got $10 off. I feel really good about that. I'm saving myself money. I'm so happy that I'm saving Well, they just dollars. updated. It's like 90 bucks now or something. That's why That's I went a- early. That's the whole point, bucks. man. Saving 10 bucks. So for everyone out there, I hope you watch wait, all wait, the wait. fights. Before, wait, but wait. before we go, Yo, before don't we forget go. to stay salty. Sign up true. with Element. Buy. Every time you purchase, you get a sample pack. With Say it again, George. Every time you purchase, you get a sample pack with your purchase. <laughs> Very Let's nice. Go salt. Go um, to Element. Link in our bio every single time you purchase. George, you're yeah, salty had, as fuck. <laughs> I had... I had Bobby Lashley over here about an hour ago or an hour and a half ago before we started filming and uh, Rich Chow and we were, uh, and I got a package uh, from Element a couple of days ago. And so uh, they raided my package right away. Not, not that kind of package. They what? Raided, they raided Bobby the did Element what? packages. Bobby raided, raided what? The Element package. I know that he was, he was greatly fucking depressed when he said No, it. yeah, he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the show. And John, take us away, bud. Hey, for everyone out there, please do me a favor. Do something kind for someone. Be good to people, and we will see you.